Thank you, everybody. My name is Prakash. I am one of the co-founders of Nextdoor, the private social network for neighborhoods. And I'm excited to tell you a little bit more today about our story with ECS. But first, let's take a little look back almost seven years ago when we started the company. We were fascinated by what we were seeing in the landscape of social media. People were using Facebook to connect with friends and family all over the globe, and Twitter to connect with people with whom they shared common interests, and of course, LinkedIn for our professional network. But we felt like there was something very important missing. What about that part of our lives that's closest to home, where we live, where our children play, our neighborhoods? In spite of having hundreds of Facebook friends and thousands of Twitter followers, I only knew two of my neighbors in my San Francisco neighborhood. And it turns out, we weren't alone. A Pew Research Institute study showed that 29% of Americans knew only a few of their neighbors, while 28% of Americans didn't know a single neighbor by name. And this was the inspiration for us to create Nextdoor, to bring back a sense of community to the neighborhood, which before technology was really the original social network. Every day, millions of neighbors across the country are using Nextdoor to find a handyman or an electrician, to reunite with a lost pet, or even more critical things like reporting a rash of break-ins or banding together during a time of natural disaster. And it's not just for neighbors. Neighbors can now listen in on communications from their local police department and fire department. They can connect with local businesses, and they can even hear from local news agencies. And Nextdoor is growing fast. In our first year, we ran a private beta that yielded us 176 neighborhoods across the country. And I'm really proud of the team because today we are launching 100 neighborhoods a day. 135,000 neighborhoods across the country are using Nextdoor. That's 70% of the neighborhoods in the US. And each one of those neighborhoods was started by one motivated member. And so let's talk a little bit about what's powering our growth. And now we've been customers with AWS since day one. And today we use almost 30 different AWS services to run our business. I'm going to tell you the story of how we reduced our build and deployment times by nearly 10x through our use of containers and the EC2 container service. Now, like a lot of companies, we started out doing weekly releases. We had a release engineer who would cut a release branch every week, would integrate all of the changes, stage them in a staging environment, and we would verify them and then push to production. But as the team started to grow, this became hugely unwieldy, and it was really difficult to manage, and we knew we needed to move faster. We wanted to break down those releases into more incremental steps and incremental components that we could deliver and isolate the impact of those changes. And we wanted to democratize and automate the process so that any developer could push their changes when they were ready. And so this led us towards continuous deployment. And luckily, we had made some prior investments in this area, in particular a zero downtime deployment mechanism that was inspired by a talk that we heard from Netflix a few years ago at AWS reInvent. And the idea behind this system, the red-black deployment system, was pretty simple. Rather than updating software in place on running instances, every time we would do a code push, we'd launch new EC2 instances. We'd configure them, install our software, and once they were ready to serve, we could transition traffic over through ELB. And once everything was confirmed to be good, we terminate the old instances. And we were really happy with this system. It was stable, it was easy to do rollbacks, but it had one fatal flaw insofar as continuous deployment was concerned. It was too slow. It took us almost 25 minutes every time we had to build a package because we were using the Debian packaging system to contain all of our system dependencies and Python package dependencies. And deploying ended up taking another 30 minutes, booting instances, configuring them with Puppet, and installing our software packages. We knew we had to move faster to support continuous deployment. And so that's when containers come in, and Docker. Using Docker allowed us to use a much simpler expression of our build 
using simple Docker files instead of the convoluted and Byzantine Debian packaging system. Packaging things up as a container meant that rather than using a package manager to actually install our application, we had a completely sandboxed environment, a full runtime environment that we could just drop onto a host. And lastly, we got huge speed increases by using Docker layer caching. By doing that, we only had to rebuild the parts of the application that changed. So by layering the system dependencies, the package dependencies, and then our source code, in most cases, we were only changing source code. So that dropped our, our build times from 25 minutes on average down to two to three minutes. And then we looked for a container management solution. And as Werner was talking about, we didn't want to run it. That was a lot of work. And so leaving all of that up to Amazon to manage the control plane was hugely attractive to us. And through native integrations with things like ELB and IAM, we could continue to use our prior investments in the red-black deployment system nearly unaltered. And lastly, because AWS was rapidly innovating the platform with things like ALBs, event streams, and CloudWatch events, we knew that they would move fast and continue to support us as we grew. So an updated look at our architecture, we still have Route 53 and ELBs that are routing traffic into our front-end web services. But those web services now run as tasks packed into containers and packed into the ECS clusters. No more booting of instances. No more puppet configuration. No more dependency installs. We dropped our deployment times from 30 minutes on average to five to seven minutes. And we have 40 plus backend services running on ECS today. Overall, we saw a nearly 10x improvement in our build and deployment times. And any of our 60 developers now can push a button and trigger a build. We've gone from releasing just a few times a week to dozens of times a day. And we get features out faster to our users, bug fixes out faster, and we've democratized development. At Nextdoor, we believe the sense of belonging and community is a basic human need. It's one that people all across the world share. And we're excited to bring Nextdoor to neighborhoods across the globe with AWS as our partner. Thank you.